um, in that piece. So I, there's a part of me that really doesn't miss, <laughs> doesn't miss that. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's a intimate. different sales process. Because yeah, right, and right. the larger parties were more of like a, a marketing, you know, a way to show people what we do at a, at a, I guess, a more affordable price. You know, you could come in and, and check us out for like 40 bucks. And uh, like the last one we did was the uh, the funky punky reggae party, where we had um, how many people? We had maybe eighty people, it was 80. Right. Uh, roughly eighty people, and the the entire menu was designed like Caribbean style. So I did like a, a, a Jamaican beef patty, and I did like a, a jerk chicken patty, and then I had and then for the vegans I had like a um, a, a curried um, jackfruit, and then Ooh. had like. Uh, yeah. We had like a, a a vegan dessert so that everyone could you know partake in dessert, mm. um, you know. So so we still you know worked pretty hard to curate to make sure that we could appeal to all the different people. But now that it's a more intimate thing, yeah. you know, we can really like turn it up a little bit and really like uh, be more creative with the food. Yeah. So, so we say it, everything is custom custom menus, custom dosing. So that's much easier to do. You know, customize everything from dosing per person per course um, to, you know, making sure that like any allergies or dietary restrictions. I mean, we're doing dinners, some of them, we did like a pescatarian dairy free, you know, um, right. it, so we can get super um, specific to how the crowd wants to eat. And that's all just easier to do when you have a smaller crowd. Hey, hey, y'all not yeah. slick, man. Y'all not slick, right? I'm hearing custom. We're going to cater to your needs. Get it, you know, just specifically how you want. A true best folk experience. Y'all not, come on now. Right, I know right. what they the margins have got to look like on right, that, right? Right, right, <laughs> yo. Because I'm like, like even the music, we're ready for this. Even the music <laughs> is customized. Like, we we ask you, like, you know, we, we basically, uh, when, we, when we have our email correspondence or our correspondence with anyone, that wants to, you know, have a, uh, a night with us, a personal chef experience with us, uh, we go through a series of, you know, questions. And one of those questions is, you know, what do you like to listen to while you eat? And, you know, I try to do my best to essentially create or curate a, a playlist that is, I try to make it like at least uh, three hours long. That way we can just keep it on shuffle and like nobody after it, like you don't have to worry about changing the song. Like, mm. and, and the, the songs like essentially play into the moods of, you know, of the dinners. So, like, you know, by the time you're having, like, uh, the music. third Get course, and, like, you're, you're sitting down and eating, you hear, you hear this song, you're like, wow, this is how I feel right now. And, like, all that is done on purpose so that, you know, we can make you feel as good as possible throughout your enti this entire experience, so this this whole thing and like I'm I'm getting even more excited about you coming out of Baltimore and I'm ready for this but absolutely to be able to to see like what you're doing and what you're going for you know even imagine just uh you know you as an individual making food for yourself just a own personal date night you can put something together well for yourself and you know have a pretty good time enjoy yourself you know what kind of music you like but when somebody else can do that for you Oh, you yeah. can have awesome food because I know some of y'all out there, you cannot flip a spatula or pancake <laughs> to save your life. So, you know, have somebody else come in, make awesome food for you, give it a little, a little bit of flavor on top, a little bit of a kick, if you know what I mean, yeah. and have every moment of that experience be something. A little bit that of a gangsterine, actually. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But so, that's that's so awesome. That's so awesome, and I'm I'm excited for it. And I know a lot of people out there, you know, are, are excited to to be able to have you you come in and uh, and prepare meals for them. So this is awesome. And and I I know our Apple Podcast audience, our Spotify audience, our YouTube audience, they would be really pissed off with us if we had this whole conversation and we didn't talk about procurement. So obviously, right, unique buying food, anyone can do that. We can all go to the grocery store as business owners. You guys, I'm sure, have some partnerships with local vendors and the restaurant, uh, you know, retailers and things like that. But you know, someone who wants to, you know, as we have a different level of audience, some people listening out who want to enter into this industry as well. How does one go about securing a license to, you know, be able to commercialize mm -hmm. and actually publicly interact with a cannabis based product? Yeah. Um, so there's, a, there's a lot right now. Um, first and foremost, I would say is uh, get yourself a personal chef 
association uh, certificate, uh, which is basically just like an insurance. Um, it, it allows you to be able to, you know, to go into someone's home and actually just cook meals, uh, whether they're mm -hmm. infused or not. Um, so I, I would start with that um, mm -hmm. and, and kind of, you know, check the laws, obviously, of where you live. Here in Massachusetts, uh, cannabis is legal for adult recreational use and legal recreation. for medical use. So okay. uh, for us, uh, the way we operate is um, we use our, our medical card to provide, uh, we're essentially caretakers providing a, 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 a service for patients. Mm -hmm. um, but also because of the recreational use, it is legal to have cannabis in your house uh, about, uh, I think it's an ounce per person in the household or per adult in the household. So if we're going to a house where, you know, there's 15 adults or whatever, everyone is allowed to have cannabis on them. So we are just there providing a food service and the cannabis is a gift. Um, mm -hmm. There's no extra charge with that. It's, 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 you know, it's yeah. part of the whole package. Some of it's, some of it's a little bit of a semantics game. So what, so the service that they're paying for is the private chef experience. Um, and then all cannabis is a gift. So the prices that um, we would charge for private dinners are not based on, you know, if, if, one group wants a 50 milligram meal and another group just wants to keep it at 10 for the whole meal. Um, those menus don't, Same don't price. differ based on the milligrams. It's based so it's, on really the food. It's like a BYOC kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, well, but we, we're bringing it to you. Right, yeah, we right, bring right. it. So mm -hmm. he'll, because um, we cook the meal really in many different ways, which is pretty cool. You know, just the experimental side of it, of learning how all, so many, I mean, there's so much more than brownies. The yeah. brownies <laughs> conversation kind of right. drives that's, me crazy because I'm like, boy. That's there's play so time. much more than brownies. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Now I lost my train of thought, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Edit. <laughs> it, it's really just about uh, letting people know that, you know, we're, we're here to provide them an amazing meal and that cannabis is just literally the, the yeah. icing on the cake. So uh, whether you want a uh, lower dose to a higher dose, it really doesn't matter. We can accommodate it all at no extra charge because the again the cannabis that we provide is is a gift. Yeah. Right. So, so it's just like like, it, like adding spice or cayenne. You know, exactly. you like your yeah, yeah, yeah. spicy. And that's literally the way I use when mm -hmm. like when I'm when I'm making my infused food. Um, that's literally the way I use it. So like, you know, I, I um recently made this like uh, real bomb like chili oil as like a topping, but it's infused. You know, you can put it a little bit on fish or put it on um Put on anything really yeah, anything. and it's just it's amazing it tastes it's a it's just it's just really good i could like bottle it and sell it but because mm. it's infused you know it's a it adds a little spice to it you know so right right yeah. Give it a little so kick. we're certified as a personal chef and we just follow all those sort of as far as licenses and, and all that um and then basically what we what, what we need or want in the future which doesn't exist in massachusetts yet is would be a um social consumption license right. so mm -hmm. that would be a license where we could do one to three day events um and it and could be it at, a, at a venue action. and yeah, that's like a state by state that's like a state by state it's license state by state. yeah right okay. now um california colorado uh uh i guess basically the entire west coast oh really i think it's the entire west coast i think um because uh nevada is included in that as well um, so those licenses are available out west, um, but as far as the northeast, it's still kind of like an emerging thing. Yeah. Um, right. I think right. the, the closest place to us that will have it before Massachusetts might actually be Maine, just because Maine's laws are a bit more progressive in terms mm -hmm. of cannabis than they are here. But that's just mm -hmm. like, you know, that's just two hours down the street. So, yeah. right. so it's the private residence that really makes it yeah. work um, because we're, because you can, you know, consume cannabis in a private residence um, and you can give it, you know, back and forth as, as gifts. So that's where we're, and then legally we're just all lined up to be a personal chef. And for now that's, and then we're just waiting on that consumption license. Right. And uh, I think uh, there was supposed to be some legislation about it this year, but uh, COVID kind of took, took hold of a, a lot of things. So yeah. that's on the back burner for now, but I, I will say in Massachusetts, um, I mean, part of what we do too is, is education and advocacy about the cannabis industry in in Massachusetts and, and what's happening around around the country too, but in Massachusetts right now, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, advocacy towards, um, I guess, uh, more of a social equity program uh, through cannabis. So right now, uh, Massachusetts has made it legal for 
uh, cannabis entrepreneurs um, who are from disenfranchised communities to be able to do uh, to have their own delivery services. And so uh, minorities have priority over that. So minorities get the license first before anybody else to be able to have a, uh, a delivery system. So for flour, for, for, or for cannabis, you know, like, yeah, for cannabis dispensary flour. products, that's brand new. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. So that just started as of, as of this month, actually, as of February. Wow. Is, is that something that you guys plan on incorporating into, into the, the business, uh, or um, it just, it was just something that you probably guys. Probably not. Yeah, probably probably not. not. Um, just, I will say we did. So we went out to California last year, right before COVID. We, we were out in LA and we actually got to see, we went to the Cannabis Cafe, which is, I don't know if you've all heard, but it's, it's the first actual cannabis cafe in the United States where you can actually go and you can buy, you know, food and then buy products to infuse the food with and also like go up to the bar and instead of ordering a beer, you order a joint or you order a blunt or like, or like a dab it is, rig yeah, it is, it's, it's mind blowing. Really um, so yeah. we went, you know, we, we went to LA with the intent to visit some friends, but also to like really go check out the business model and see if that's something that would be like viable here in Massachusetts. And the way they got it going, man, like it's definitely a, it's a lot of money to, to get that going, but they got something special. If as long as like people are willing to like, you know, put the money down, as long as the, the state is willing to like open up and, and agree to the terms and conditions, I feel like that that could take over the world. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, all of it sounds so intriguing. I was quiet because it was just y'all was giving me.